Hey everyone, today we're doing a 300 series dual battery install under the bonnet on this brand new 300 series Land Cruiser. So first thing we're going to do is move this top battery cover and this top vent cover. So what we're going to do is move this top battery cover, this vent cover and the battery hold down. So what we have to do is push these two push tabs back, lift up the battery cover and place it off to the side. Next with this vent cover, all you have to do is there's one little push down clip here, push it right to the ground and it just pops up like so. And there's also a little push tab here, push it to the back, lift it up, so you pop these two little clips out here, to the end, just pulls out and folds over like so. Now for the battery hold down, all there is is these two little bolts on either side, like so, so there's two of them. And a little battery hold down comes out just like that. Okay guys, so next what we're going to do is move the battery tray at the bottom here. All it is, is one, two, three, four, five bolts. And they just come out of these little spots here. And the battery tray then just lifts out. Like so. And the next step, all we have to do is cut this little grommet here. So I've already had some cables running through it. But you just snip the end off, ready to run the cables through to the socket bank. Okay, and the next step is to remove this front kick panel and this passenger side panel here. So all you have to do is there is this little screw tab up in behind underneath the glove box here. And all you have to do is try and get your fingers under the inside here. And all you have to do is rock it from the front to the back until it all pops off like so. Now for this front section here. Yeah. So all we have to do is remove this panel underneath the glove box here and the sidekick panel. So the panel underneath this glove box, there's just three little clips. One, two, and three, which then folds down like so. So then you can just clip it out, clip the light out like so, and it all just pops out. Into the sidekick panel, there's a screw grub up underneath the glove box there where it just pulls out, pulling towards you. Like so. So we're at the back seat of the car now. All we have to do is remove this side panel here so we can get up into this back panel to mount our socket bank and run our cables up to it. So all you have to do is similar to the front, get your fingers up underneath and slowly pull towards you so the clips start to click out until they all come apart like so. And our next, next step is what we're going to do is move this little plastic trim here which then gives us access to our seatbelt bolt down the bottom here. So all you want to do is under this with a 14 millimeter. It comes out like so. Comes out like so. It should be able to rest up there. Just be careful not to scratch any of your panels. All you want to do is just unclip it. So try and work your thumbs in this door sill here when it starts to push across like so. All it is is like four little plastic tabs. One, two, three, four. And it just comes apart like so, which should be enough to run your two 6mm twin cables up to your socket bank, which is then mounted in the cup holder. And then the next step is we're going to start running our cables down to the back for our socket bank. So what you want to do is remove this metal tray here so you can easily access this side grommet here where you want to run your cables through. Okay, so what we want to do is just remove those five bolts there. There's three on the side and two on the bottom tray. And all you need to do is then this all comes out like so. So next step is what we want to do is try and run our cables for this grommet here. Personally we use CRC in the workshop here but any type of silicon um, lubricant will do just to make it easy to push the cables through so you don't tear it. So with this particular 300 series we're fitting a couple extra accessories so we have extra cable running to that grommet. To make life a little bit easier either try and get yourself a single core bit of cable or a really small bit of wire just so it's, it makes life a little bit easier to push through that grommet. So once it's either taped onto this cable or if you don't have any extra cable you can just push it straight through. All you want to do is spray a little bit of your lubricant on the opening there and a little bit on the, the lugs there so it can be easily pulled through straight through that grommet with no issues. So we've got our first little cable through and you just want to pull it a little bit so it's all the way through 
then you want to start working on your second cable to follow it through with this one. Yeah. So now once we've got this first cable through, what I've gone and done is electrical tape our second cable to this first lot of cable here. And all you want to do again is just gently pull it in through that grommet, pops in just like so. So all you want to do is keep pulling until on the engine bay all that is left is a little bit of conduit on the cable so it's easy to mount straight onto your earth and to your fuse. So once you pull your cable through, all you're left is this, with these little four strands here. These are the easier to earth and the easier to positives going to your fuse. Sweet. Okay, so the next step is what we want to do is run your cable safely down this corner bit here and along the factory loom that Toyota has given us that runs from the front here right to the back where our soccer bank will be. So all we want to do is go underneath these two pink bits, underneath this white bit, and cable tying about every 15, 20 centimeters or so, so it's nice and secure to this loom. And you want to run it all the way through until you get to the back. Right. So now all we want to do, is, like I said before, just thread them all the way through these little tie downs here. So once it's all set thread through those three clips, all you want to do is just pull the excess through, but making sure you have a nice bit of a loop up here. So it's not pulling tight and not getting caught in anything. Nice little loop down like so. Pull the excess through, and then you can go through and cable tie up to this main power loom here. Okay, so our next step is to run the cable underneath this B pillar here. There is enough room to push these through without having to take this pillar off here. But once you get to this area, I would suggest taking this off. All it is, is it clips into that pink bit of plastic like so. All you need to do is get your fingers in here. In this side, all you need to do is pop it up like so. And it just lifts up like that and gives you a heap of room to run your cables up to the back there. Okay, next step is, what you want to do is pop off this cup holder here. All it is, is you just get your hands inside of it, and it just pops up like so. Might need a bit of manoeuvring, but if you can get your fingers under it, underneath it, it does just pop up like so. Like so, and it just pops out. So what we want to do is just run our cables from our door here, up into our cup holder, so they're just laying out here while we sort out what we're going to do with our cup holder. Right. Next step is with our cup holder, what we're going to do is drill at least a 24mm hole because you want to fit all this wiring straight through the back so it sits nice and flush like so. So I'm just going to use a step bit here. You can use a hole saw bit but this is what I had lying around the workshop. What we want to do is roughly get it in the middle of that top cup holder there. That's how the plate sits so it can go straight like that. So if for whatever reason you don't have another hole saw big enough to fit the Anderson plug through, I'm going to show you how to quickly and easily de-pin these Anderson plugs. So all you have to do is find the pin, there's a little tab down the sides of it there, and all you have to do is pop a little screwdriver or a flat blade into that side, that pops up, pops out like so. So that's one, that's two, just push the pins through the back of the Anson plug and it pops off just like that. Now it's into the other side. One. Two, just like so. Push the, push the pins back through and it pops off just like that. So all you're left with is your four terminal lugs like so. What I want to do with them is just poke them through your hole that you've made. So you plate sits nice and flush. Now the next step is with these 
three screw holes, just grab three of the included screws and screw them straight into the plastic there to hold it nice and flush. And so once you get your sock plate in position, then you can just screw it in to the plastic, like so. Just like that. And it sits nice and flush in your cup holder. And now with our sock make all mounted in our cup holders, all you want to do is grab your two grey Anderson plug plugs, and all you need to do is just plug the two ends into the Anderson plug. So your red is your positive and your black is your negative. To one side and black into the other side. Anyone hear them click in like that? Give them a little tug to make sure they're not going to pull out and cause any headaches. So you just want to go ahead and do the same on the other side. And once they're all clicked in, all you need to do is just quick connect plug in like so. And then you may notice you might have some excess cable. All you need to do is just feed it down and out of the way. And once you get to here, all you need to do is click back in your cup holder. Like so. Right. Once you finish installing your cup holder and tidying up the wiring, all you need to do is put, pop all your plastics back into their clips and put all the plastics back in down the side here and at the front and then we can move on to the battery and dual battery in the front. Okay, and next step, once you've put all your plastics back together and you back up to the engine bay, what you want to do is with the two earth terminals on this little nut, this little bolt here, that comes off and these sit nice and comfortably around and there like so, with a couple of cable ties. Alright, so once it's all together like that, nice and cable tied up, if you want to keep your positive cables just up out of the way while I put the metal tray back in. Alright, so the next step is we've mounted all our little spaces that come in our kit. This is so our tray sits nice and flush on that factory metal tray as it is some warps and indentations. So sit nice and flat on those spaces, like so. Yeah, right, so now we're going to fit our Accelerate battery hold down tray, which just sits on top of that factory tray and on top of our little spaces there. Now, because it is a little bit of a tight fit, there is AC lines right here. So you want to guarantee there's a little bit of space our trays do come with a little bit of foam on the outside edge, but you do want to be wary that you do give a little bit of space just so when the body flexes, it's not going to rub through on your AC lines and cause a hole and cause a leak. So now once we have our bottom tray mounted and in, what you want to do is start first with your lead acid start battery and then our lithium secondary battery. And when you put in your batteries, what you want to make sure of is that you're both your positive terminals. So that both your positive terminals are at this end. Because with your factory system, it bolts on from this angle. And then with our top tray, all our cables come in this way to our positives here. Okay, so going in next is our Accelerate top tray. Which just slides on top of our both batteries there and meets up with our nut insert there and our bolt hole that's placed in there from the factory tray. So I'll go ahead and I'll scroll these down. So what we've done now is now mounted both our batteries, both our lithium and our start battery with our accelerate plate over the top with all our fuses mounted on top of that. So then after that, we put our supplied earth straps from the two earth points up the top of the batteries here. 
with one running to our start battery and one running to our secondary battery. So up next what we're going to do is we're going to have this front factory plastic trim which is just seven clips at the front here. So there's four at the front, three in the middle there. They will just pop off like so. They're like the one up in the corner, just a push tab, push them all the way through and it just pops out. So once you remove this plastic trim, the DC-DC charger mounts on this side here using the factory bolts. So, there's one bolt here which holds the DC-DC charger on using that bolt hole there. Now, personally what I do is I like to take off the DC-DC charger from the mount. This makes life a little bit easier. The thread this bolt in just because it is a flange bolt, it does have to get caught on the side of the charger. So inside, like there, and all you do is just lay it over the top, like so. Yep. Once you roughly get the charger into place, what you then want to do is grab all your excess length and just tuck it down the front of the grill for now until we go until we get to running it. Okay, so once you have all your tray all mounted, then we, I like to bolt the DC DC charger onto that tray. So, with your excess cable, with all these cables here, there is a factory loom that runs up underneath this cross member, just up underneath here. So if you put your hand up underneath here, you'll feel a factory loom that runs the whole length across, and it comes out just to here. Which then you can run down behind the headlight, underneath the airbox, and up to our fuses. Okay, so we've just finished drawing our cable from our DC-DC charger along the front here, underneath the airbox. So now we're to here, with all our cables. We have our two positive cables about to onto our fuses. We have our earth cable for our solar and our earth for our DC-DC charger. And we have our ignition trigger. So with our earth, there is a bolt just underneath the horn here, which we're gonna bolt this on to. With our ignition, we're gonna run it to this fuse box just here, which if you pop off this, some cables running through a little gland there. So what we're gonna do is run this up along here and run it up through that gland where those cables come through to keep it nice and neat looking factory. So to these cables, we're just gonna run up here with the factory harness to the fuse box and then up into our fuses. So with our blue ignition wire, what we like to do is on the side, we just like to pop out this little bit here. Like so. And we like to run our cable up through that bit there. So all it is, it's just a little clip up underneath there, which just pops out either with a set of pointy nose pliers or a flat screwdriver. That top bit just pops off and you can feed your cable up through and it clicks back on nice and neat. And again, keeps that factory look.
without having to cut a big hole in the top of this and also stops dust and water ingress getting into here and causing shorts. So with your ignition trigger, we supply a piggyback fuse, which then piggybacks off this bottom 28 fuse here. So we just pull it out, grab the 28 fuse, push it into the fuse holder on the bottom of the two, because on the top there's a supplied 10 amp fuse, which then this just clicks in in that orientation, so the tail is pointing towards the front of the car, which then we just cut our cable to length, make it look nice and neat, cut our cable to length and crimp it into the join that it's supplied with the piggyback holder. And then so with this one, with the factory plug, all you want to do to get it separated to fit our new battery terminal on our battery is just unscrew that nut there, like so, and this bit just comes apart. So you can set this bit aside for now. And then once you've connected up all your earths and all your auxiliary power, you then and put this back onto the start battery, start the car, and happy days. So, and that's it. Once you connect everything up to your terminals, your dual base system in the Scan Series is done. One of the last things to do is just make a little notch in your positive cover, just so it can fit your new cable going to your DC DC charger. But once that's done, all your covers and everything back on, you're right, and your 300 Series now is fitted with an Accelerate dual battery system.